Hey, good morning, options traders, and welcome back, everyone. Before you touch that dial, please continue with this video. I know sometimes traders are looking, what? Log normally distributed, this sounds like a math class. Well, in some ways it is, but there's a very important reason that you need to understand why stock prices are log normally distributed. Now, many of you might have heard that term, but you're not really sure what it means, or more importantly, what are the implications for this? Well, you're going to find out in future videos, it affects the way that your call and put prices behave. It affects the way that they decay. So it's going to be very important to understand for strategies like straddles and strangles, which are ones that are quite common right now with all of the volatility. So for this video, we're just going to be talking about what is log normal and why are stock prices log normal. And then in the future videos, Coming up shortly, I'll show you the implications for that, why you have to understand that as an options trader. So what does all of this mean? Well, stock prices is where we have to start. This is ultimately what we're trying to play, what our strategies are all about, what's happening with the stock prices, up, down, or sideways. Well, it turns out that stock price changes are random. And so the question that we want to ask is, does that mean that stock prices themselves follow a bell curve. So notice the difference in these keywords right here. Stock price changes are random. And what that means when we talk about the change, this is the day-to-day -day changes. So when you th hear things like the Dow was up 200 points or down 650 points, those are changes. Or IBM was up a dollar or down 70 cents. Those are stock price changes. And if you were to plot those, if you were to write them down on a piece of paper every single day, plus a dollar, down 70 cents, up 32 cents, and so on, and you were to put a histogram and plot them, you would get a bell curve. And so that leads a lot of traders to go, well, therefore, if we were to plot the stock prices themselves, we should also get a bell curve. So they start thinking this is what they would get, and they don't. They get something more like this. So in red is what's called a log normal distribution. And the key thing to notice is that there's a big skew here. Do you see how this right tail reaches way out here to the right? That's suggesting that it's more likely for stock prices to reach higher prices than to reach lower prices. And in fact, if we had some numbers down here, let's say that the center of this blue curve was 100. If we made it a big enough standard deviation, we would have to allow for negative stock prices, which of course, fortunately for us as stock traders, can happen. They can only go to zero. And if we look at a log normal curve, it can only go to zero. So that also implies that there's not as much potential for the downside. And that's why I said earlier, you're going to find out in future videos that the implications of stock prices having a log normal distribution will have great effects on the way that your put options behave and especially the way that they decay. And you need to understand that. So for right now, for this video, what we want to figure out is why this happens. Why is it that if we have stock price changes that look like this, a bell curve, that the stock prices themselves look like this? Well, the reason is actually pretty interesting and it's because of compounding. So let's say that we have a stock price trading at 100 and it rises 10% one day and then falls 10% the next day. A lot of traders would think, well, that means you're back to zero and you're not. When it goes from 100 and up 10%, that would take it to 110, but now it's trading for 110. And so if it falls 10%, that's a bigger number. We're taking 10% of 110. And that means it's going to fall from 110 down to 99. So think about that. A stock starting at 100 and rising 10% and falling 10% actually means it's a 1% loss. Now, mathematically, it's a little easier to show that if we were to just multiply by 1.1 and then multiply by 0.9, which is the same thing as saying falling by 10%, we're retaining 90% of that price, it gives us 0.99. So yes, you can do this all day long. Push the price up 10%, knock it down 10%, up 10%, down 10%, and you will slowly erode that stock's price. And as a side note, this is why I've talked about in other videos why you have to be careful about 
levered ETFs because they have a lot of this whipsawing back and forth, and that is one of the reasons that they tend to erode over time. So what are the implications for this as a stock's price? What you're going to see is that it tends to accelerate the upside, but it tends to decelerate the downside. So let's go over to an Excel spreadsheet and have a closer look. So now over into the Excel spreadsheet, let's start with these upper numbers. I've got a stock trading for 100, and we are going to make it rise for 10 straight days by a certain percentage, which is right here, which we can change. But for right now, I'm going to start at 2%. So if it goes from 100 and increases 2%, that would be 102. But if it increases 2% again, it doesn't go to 104, it goes to 104.04. It's because it's multiplying 2% on a bigger number, 102 instead of 100. On day three, it goes to 106.12, day four, 108.24, and so on. And for 10 straight days of increasing 2%, it actually goes up to 21.9%. Now, sometimes people would think, well, if it goes up 2% for 10 days, that's 20%. Not quite, because there is a compounding effect. Now, what if we did exactly the same thing to the downside? We're going to start at 100 and subtract 2% and then subtract 2% again and subtract 2% again. Now notice when we do that, we have smaller numbers that we're subtracting 2% from. See on the way up, we had bigger numbers and that's what's causing it to accelerate, but down here it's starting to decelerate. So look what happens after 10 days. The stock price only falls about 18.3%, but on the way up, it increased it almost 22%. So see what this is showing is that the stock prices rising tend to compound that effect. And that's what's causing that right tail to shift further out to the right that we saw in that previous chart. And on the way down, you can only take, let's say 2% off and 2% off forever, but you can't go below zero. And so it starts to decelerate that process. The losses aren't quite as pronounced to the downside. Now this effect gets magnified if we increase this percent. So let's take it from 2% to 5%. We'll go 0.05. Now watch what happens. After 10 days of up, the stock goes to 62.89, almost 63%. But on the way down, it only loses 40%. See, you would think if, if it increases at 63% on the way up, it would decrease at 63% on the way down. And it doesn't, it's not even close. And if we go to, let's say 10%, see now we're getting into some really big numbers up here. Let's stretch out these columns a bit. See, now we can go up 160% on that stock's price, but to the downside, we'd only lose 65%. Now, if we make these percentage changes real small, then the effects aren't as pronounced. On the way up, about 10.5% would be the increase. On the way down, about 9.5% would be the decrease. So not too far off. But this idea of compounding is what creates that right skew that we saw earlier. So now take a look at the charts below. Here is a log normal distribution, and here is a normal in blue. So in the red chart, the log normal, look at these numbers out here. Even though we don't see the little red rectangles, there are actually numbers out here. That's why Excel is printing these. It actually got some stock prices pretty close to 214. This is with a stock price of 120% volatility. But look if we assume that they were normal. We only got up to about maybe 183. That's a whole lot less than 214. Now look to the downside. On the blue curve, on a normal distribution, we fell down to about 31 was the lowest. But on the log normal, only down to about 50. This range right here is about 50 to 55 almost. See, it's really hard for stock prices to continue falling at a certain rate, and that's why they tend to decelerate. All right, so was that just a fluke? Let's try it again and see. So I just hit F9, and that recalculates, gives us another throw of the dice, if you will, in Excel. And now, look at this way up here, 227. Now again, you can't quite see those little red bars, but they are there. That's why Excel is printing these numbers. We got stock prices up to 227 under a log normal. On a normal curve, 
up to about 182. Big difference. Look to the downside on the log normal, down to about maybe 46 at the low, 47. On the blue curve on a normal, see we got down to about 30. So again, this is really the main thing to understand is that even though the stock price changes are random and therefore would follow this blue curve, a normal curve, that doesn't imply that stock prices themselves are normally distributed. Instead, they are log normal. And so hopefully you, you have a better understanding why. So while we're on the topic, let me just do another little side note about the Black-Scholes model. There may be some traders who hear that stock prices are log normally distributed. And they go, okay, that's pretty cool. That's good information. I didn't know that. But then they go on to read about the Black-Scholes model and they see that it uses a normal bell curve to find those probabilities, mainly for finding delta. And they go, aha, the Black-Scholes model must be completely wrong because those probabilities are much higher for the stock prices to rise and they are to fall. And so therefore, everything about the model is wrong. Black and Scholes completely overlooked this. Well, they didn't win a Nobel Prize for being dumb. Okay, this is a complete misunderstanding when you hear traders make this argument. And I hear this a lot. So the reason that Black and Scholes use a normal bell curve to find the probability is that if stock prices are log normal, which they are, which is what we saw, then the log of the stock price changes must be normal. It's what we call a transformation. And that's why I've talked about that in previous videos on volatility, to show you the volatility calculation. And we always have to take the log of these stock price changes. And so that transforms it or converts it to where we can use it under a normal curve. So hopefully that will clear that up if you ever hear that argument. But for right now, I just want you to at least understand what a log normal curve is and why it occurs, and then we'll take a look at some of the implications for future videos. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.